thank you very much. <laughs> Um, I'm going to talk today a little bit of the work that we do and why it's important for us to have a community in our website as well as in our social media. So I studied marketing and advertisement and I work as marketing and PR assistant. Uh, that's what I've been doing for the last seven years and I've done it for private companies but also for charities over the last three years here in Scotland. Uh, the main thing that we do is trying to help deprived areas through sports and diversionary activities. So let's just start with the concept of a community. A community is a group of people that normally live in the same place, but when it comes to online communities, it's much more defined for the fact that they share an interest. So normally, as the second exception says, is having certain attitudes and interests in common. And this is really important in order to build your community, understanding your audience, what they like, and what places do they like to share. Um, what's the difference between an online community and followers? I think this is something that people often ask themselves, like, so anyone who has a good following in their website or traffic, do they really have a community? And the answer is no. For me, the main thing is that it's not really about what you tell about yourself, it's about the conversation that happens between your audience and you. That's very, very important. It's also about understanding what they want, how they want it, and when they want it. And your analytics are gonna be key to understand all of that, whether it's on your website or on your social media, you need to know who is watching you and why, and how to retain that audience uh, over a length period of time. We need to understand the difference between individual, collective, and conceptual. So a lot of people communicate as a group, no? Like if you're a company and your name is, I don't know, Brain Stretchers, you would say Brain Stretchers has developed this new thing. Whilst a lot of people like us try to make it individual so our audience know who we are and why we're presenting something. And it's also a very key tool to develop the trust with your community. So we'll, we'll dip through that later on, but the idea is that you shouldn't talk to a collective or as a collective, and much more as an individual that they can trust and they can see. And also they are part of your content and your brand. Your community should be there on your website and also on your social media. It shouldn't be something that once in a while you mention. It should be something that is very present on your communications and on your website on a daily basis. And also it evolves as every relationship does. So it's very, very important that you keep up with the changes, how they behave on your website, what are they doing differently every time, because for instance, in only one year, we have seen a huge shift on how they consume the content that we are creating, and also why. So that has been a really good learning curve for all of us, to follow what our audience wants, instead of creating something and expect them to come. So let's make a few examples that make it more clear. We have here Mark Zuckerberg from Facebook and also Jeff Bezos, that you might know him. He's uh, the CEO of Amazon. Uh, the difference between these two people is huge. Mark Zuckerberg is easily recognizable. I think everyone knows uh, Mark from different platforms. And the way that he managed his identity and his foundation is very personal. His foundation has the name of his own daughter. He talks personally. He was doing a tour. He was running, posting pictures every single day of his own tour, his own experiences. Whilst when it comes to Jeff Bezos, beyond the tech community, there is not so much about him. We don't know really that much about his life or the connection with the website. Their website basically provides a service. It sells you something. End of the story. That's all the relationship you have with Amazon. Whilst uh, Mark Zuckerberg has a longer relationship. There has been huge controversy about what has happened recently with Facebook, but the truth is that they have implemented great tools on Instagram to build communities, so people can use Instagram to build their own communities, but also there is an entire community that supports Instagram. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, there is a huge difference in the approach of both people, and the thing is, like when it comes to Mark, even all the things that has happened aside, people keep supporting him. Facebook keeps growing. Instagram is the fastest growth uh, platform. And I think that shows something. Their audience trusts them and are willing to protect the platforms and what they have built on the platforms because they have ownership of them. 
Whilst to me, if tomorrow Amazon breaks down and there is a huge controversy with it, I don't care. There will be another supplier that they will give me the products that I need. Let's make another example. I don't know if you know this. Uh, he's Philip DeFranco. He creates news and online content on YouTube, but he has also built an entire company based on telling news in a trustworthy form, in a much more deep form as well. And he actually does very deep research on every news that he shares. So he talks about anything and everything, but in a way that is very personal, and you can always put the face on it. And then you have BuzzFeed that actually couldn't even find anything. I had to put all the logos that they have because I couldn't find a face for BuzzFeed. And BuzzFeed is also based on YouTube, but their content is much based on kind of creating something that is vital, that it attracts attention, that is shareable, much more than you identifying BuzzFeed as something trustworthy. So every single example that I'm showing are successful. Obviously, Amazon is successful. BuzzFeed has 17 million people following them. The difference is that Philip DeFranco has 6.1 million. Philip DeFranco gets an average of 1.5 views per video. BuzzFeed gets 2 million with an audience that's extra double the size of Philip DeFranco. The loyalty of one audience and the other is massively different. And when Philip DeFranco has had problems in the past, or their brand has struggled for X, Y, Z reasons, or the algorithm of YouTube, people have decided to support him through merchandise, through other platforms. One of the things that I think Philip DeFranco is doing really well in terms of building a community is that he has created an app where people can submit videos with questions about things they want to know more about. And what he does is that he goes into their research, makes a news video, and explains in depth everything, at the same time that he lets the community to answer that person. So very recently, he has made a huge video about uh, paper straws, metal straws, and this huge trend about changing disposable straws for, for long-term straws, because people were very curious about it. So it's not just like your classic news outlet that decides what is current and makes a news and that's it. Everyone in that video sent a video talking about their own opinions, their experiences, and then he proposed ideas and brought the facts. And that has been really, really helpful for his company and his views, and is making him more successful and stronger. Could we say that BuzzFeed, BuzzFeed sorry, is not successful? No, definitely not. BuzzFeed is really successful. But what model do you rather be in? That's the question that you should make yourself. So I found this quote that appears actually in a lot of places that is that social media is an amazing tool, but it's really the face-to-face -face interaction that makes long-term impact. I highly disagree. <laughs> the reason because I brought it is because it's true that face-to-face -face interaction is very valuable, but lots of long-term impact happens online. And also for younger generations, the younger we go, the most impact, the bigger impact it has in them. For me, it has been a tremendous life changing. Like, I learn so much online. I interact with so many people. I'm a foreigner. Like, if it wasn't for my online communities, I would have contact with nobody. If it wasn't for WhatsApp, I wouldn't know anything about my friends' lives. I think this is essential to understand that things are changing and that your website can be a key element of that change. I'm sure face-to-face -face interaction has really huge impact in your companies, in your organizations. You go for a coffee and you agree on something, and it's really, really helpful. What I'm saying is that you don't need to exclude, and you should contemplate your audience in multiple forms, and you should build relationships in multiple ways. One example that came from the Global Youth Anti-Corruption Forum is that they gathered a few young people, 250, and they clearly saw, show, saw sorry, that around the world, youth are using social media to monitor the effectiveness of public service. It's almost a form of activism and to control politics, to control public figures and what they are doing. So definitely it has an impact because I don't believe in this is real life, this is online life. There is only one life, multiple forms of connecting with others. 
Another research example, there is a clinical report from the US, it's made by pediatricians, show that social media participation can offer adolescents deeper benefits that extend into their view of self, community, and the world. And that means that they have opportunities to, for community engagement through fundraising for charities and local projects. They also enhance uh, the individual and collective creativity. There's a lot happening on social media platforms and websites that makes people do something different. Growth of ideas from the creation of blogs, podcasts, videos, they are creators. They are not just consumers. And they expand one of online's connections through shared interests. I personally love Goodreads. I don't know if any of you use it. Uh, it's the only platform I have found where I can talk about books. And that doesn't happen in my real life because nobody around me likes books. So I need to go there. And also it fosters one's individual identity and unique social skills. It's true that social media has break our concept of how we are social and how we engage with other people. But it does also develop social skills because people are more likely to start a conversation online because they are not so afraid of rejection as you would do in person. Most of you probably won't approach me, won't say hi, won't say anything, but if you see a picture that you like online, you might click like. And that's already an interaction. And it really facilitates a little bit that first step. So this is an example I really like. It's from Spain. It's from our police. Um, normally, police doesn't have great social media. Police is not something that they foster websites or anything like that. Our social media police national uh, decided to put an entire team on social media and encourage people to participate on it. They're very friendly. They make a lot of jokes, even they're the police. Um, and they're using the, the consumers or the users, followers, um, to report things in constant time, to the extent that they are the national police with the highest following in the world. And they have translated that into their website, which is really interesting because it's not anymore just information. It is about the interaction, and it's about what people want to feel safe to report a crime. And a lot of people won't feel safe to report a crime person to person. Because if I go to my national police, it's very likely that the people that work there are my neighbors. Do I want to tell my neighbors about certain things that are happening in my house? Maybe not. Maybe I feel much more comfortable sending a private message and let them run the investigation of whatever is happening and not having to give my face until the last step when they're already ready to support and they have something that can help me. So that has been a game changer for them. And I think it's a clear example of how it's not all about being social and building a community from charity perspective. It can also be from any perspective, public bodies or private companies. So why did I want to build an online community? So when I started at Achieve More Scotland, we didn't have a strong online community. I'll talk in depth of that. But my main reasons to build a community is because I knew it was going to be a more powerful module for us to work with, much more, without a shadow of a doubt. When I was making the application, I, I put that little few lines that you might want to read. But basically, it's that social responsibility is becoming so important. It's increasingly one of the most important things for people to trust on your brand. And people keep ignoring it. Social responsibility cannot be just something that you do one day because you're a good person or because the CEO is engaged on something. Even if you're a very small company, you should still have some elements of social responsibility. And it shouldn't necessarily be something super heavy about uh, feeding the poor, saving the world, ending wars. No, it's, it's nothing about that. It's about what matters to you. Does it matter that more small creators can make music? Are you a company that wants to maybe help dancers to have a career because it's very difficult on your area? Is it a matter of sustainability? Can your product be more sustainable and can you communicate about that? And how are you going to do it online? So everyone can have a social element within their product, company, 
It always can happen. And the thing is, like, when you have that online community around you, there is an incredible effect for your organization. Because for them, there is a connection that is stronger. And they are not so willing to change to another company. They are not so willing to go for somebody else. And that loyalty is key, whether you are a private company, an organization, or a public body. So let's go to the actual case study of my website and what we have done with our WordPress. Achieve More Scotland is a charity based in Glasgow that works every single week with 2,500 kids. We provide free diversionary activities such as football, dance, cricket, and gymnastics, amongst many men, more. The thing that we do is that we provide those activities for free because it's a very simple way to engage with young people that live on the private areas and that might not have the best life chances. And through that, we put them in a journey that can take them to universities, school, jobs, etc. They can do volunteering, international volunteering. We have an employability program. We give them um, internships sometimes. So it's great. It's about what they want to achieve and us facilitating that. That's it. Uh, we right now are running a program with a partner to feed kids because holiday hunger is real in this country. And we realize a lot of our kids come to our activities and have had nothing to eat. And maybe if we have an activity that lasts for six hours, they have nothing. They haven't brought an apple, they haven't brought water. So providing free foods in every single one of our activities was essential because they were lost. They couldn't put attention to it. So apart from that, we also have competition team for the dance uh, dancers and a football league, amongst many other things. When I arrived, what I could find is that we had very strong communities of line, because it's the private communities. People tend to stick together and build things together, which is great. But when you come to our website, there were not so much connection. There was a lack of engagement online in general. We would post something on Facebook. People would see it but not react to it. Um, the website for us, it was just a source of providing information to everyone. That was it. There was no, no other reason to have the website. And on the background, it was very difficult to manage. Because whoever was our developer didn't think that we would like to change anything. So basically, it was very stable, very static. That was it. The information was not complete because we couldn't change it. So a lot of things were outdated. Organizations and companies keep changing constantly, and we couldn't provide anything. And it lacks identity. Whilst we're a very friendly young organization, our website didn't tell that story because the developer doesn't work with us. That's the reason. And finally, our relationships with parents was very limited. So we have coaches that go and give the classes to the kids. And they might have some relationship with the parents, but we didn't at the office. We didn't know who these people were. And everyone is very much spread around Glasgow. So it's not like you can just go and visit and you'll see them. Not really. So what we did, when it comes to brand, we changed the website to be a brand more consistent with what we wanted. So we don't speak about Achieve More. Oh, Achieve More has developed. No. We speak about we or I. The focus is on our young people and our kids. And this is very, very important. As I said before, we build a community through including them. In our website, a lot of the content is created by our young people. We don't tell them what they have to talk about. We don't tell them anything. They can talk about whatever. They can use their own slang. It's absolutely fine. As far as it follows a few rules, it's absolutely fine. And also. It's not about the sad stories. Of course, we have plenty of sad stories. We work with people that really have nothing in life. But it's not about that. It's about how great our young people are and how many things they are achieving and how every single child should have the same chances. Because it's just a child. So they know how to tell that story because they don't see their own lives with pity. And they are not trying to get funding. They're just talking about their lives. And very important that it wasn't there is being kind, be thankful. I think our website was so information-based that nobody thought that we should be thankful or kind to people who approached the website, and that was missing. The specific actions is that we created the spaces that they could use, like the blog. The blog is very 
changeable depending on what they need and what they talk about. Everything can be updated. We change the website about twice a week, sometimes more. There are galleries, there are different kinds of content. It's not only information. It's very, very current. It's very fun. If someone wants to make a post uh, with memes, we just let them do it. It's, it's quite fun. And also, there are multiple voices for multiple audiences. Our website is the only place we can control fully. I cannot control Facebook, cannot control Twitter. Audiences are split. Depending on the time, they might not even be there. <laughs> so for us to have multiple voices, it was very important. Because we have corporate partners, we have parents, young moms, kids, young people. It's a very diverse group of audiences. And the only place in common that they have is our website. Not all of them are on our Facebook. Our Facebook is mostly for young moms. Um, there are definitely not the young people there. Most of them are on Instagram. It was very difficult to establish channels of communications with one of, some of them. Uh, comment sections on the website doesn't really work for us neither. So what we did is open lots of channels of communications for each of them. They can approach us by email. They can approach us by WhatsApp. They can approach us by direct message on Facebook. But also, we have created personal Facebooks that are professional that they can talk with us in. Because sometimes the one that is achieved more is not comfortable for them to approach us. It just feels too professional. It doesn't feel right for them. All of these we have discovered through listening to them and seeing their data and what they are doing with us. We didn't make up any of these. We just listened. That's all we did. And finally, um, the information uh, is available on the site, but there is much more emphasis on image and video. We wanted to have something very dynamic and fun, because that's what we do. Like, at the end of the day, our young people is just dancing every day. Like, there's, and, you know, I'm playing games. It made no sense to be so information heavy. But at the same time, when a corporate enters, they need to see that information. So that was very, we need to find a balance there. And we're still working on it. They can contact us, as I said, for multiple sites. But I would say that the reason because the community is so strong for us is that when they come to our website, they already know where to direct themselves. And that's because the website really makes the journey for them. We have split the audiences, so the journey is very clear. And if something doesn't work, because that took a few months, if we see that everyone goes to one place and then drop off, we'll change the website immediately. It's a lot of risk taken. I know most companies cannot do that, cannot just change something. But for us, it was like, let's experiment. There's nothing to lose. In the worst case scenario, we learn. So let's just change it. This is the website. I think it's very clear what we do. <laughs> I think one single image shows everything. As you can tell, very simple, very, very simple. You wouldn't imagine how much information this website contains. This is the kind of information we had to give to parents is when our football matches happen and a little bit of the site. Uh, something that we have changed is that in the address, we don't put the address only. We sometimes say things like, it's next to, next to the bookies or next to the Sainsbury's around the corner or on the, I don't know, on the beach, you know, with very local kind of directions, so people know. These are the galleries. Every single place has a gallery of pictures. We try the coaches to take pictures. I myself go to a lot of those sites to take pictures as well. And we change the galleries constantly. So sometimes the parents are not really on Facebook, because maybe they're in their 50s and they're not interested. But they do always go to our website to know the timings. So they can also see the gallery of pictures. And they are really appreciative. They always come back to us like, oh, when are you going to post that picture? I am looking forward to see my child. Uh, we have faces. We are done with the whole Achieve More. I'm Luna, that's Robert, Paul, Carla, Tony, Jasmine, and our annual report. We know every single child name. Why don't we reflect that on our website? Like generally, it's our Kamis, our Karens, you know, we know them. So we wanted to reflect that. And if you click, you will see a lot of information about our passions and who we are. And they know us. Some moms have even created uh, videos for us since they have that 
close relationship. We try to emphasize first the images, and as you can tell on the bottom is when we put galleries and information. Uh, we just think it gives a better vibe, and because we change it regularly, it never feels outdated, it never feels like you have nothing to receive. They always come back because there is something new. And here is the blog. I couldn't really show in a screenshot more, but basically, tons of posts. Sometimes they talk um, about social media, body image, things that they're experiencing. Sometimes we talk about fundraising activities, which is more for partners. We also try to tackle a few issues when it comes to politics and inclusion of young people in politics. Sometimes it's young people talking about that. Sometimes it's us. We are not that bothered about the structure here. We are just trying to make people comfortable within our community and within our website. And finally, the support us, which is a little bit more, let's say, professional, because it's mostly for corporate partners. But the thing is, like, we have kept very brief information and very relaxed information. When you go to most support us fundraising parts of any charity, they are very heavy. And they're very difficult to understand sometimes because they're full of jargon from charities. Most people don't work with us. They don't know what we do. So yeah, very simple. Walk, run, climb, or cycle. Come to our events. Organize your own event. That's it. And if nothing that you see here is interesting for us, just give us a call. Send us a message on our phones. We'll answer you back very, very soon. So that's a little bit what we have done. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'm not sure if everything is clear, but the, the main thing that I wanted to highlight is that everything that we have done has come back to us within six months incredibly. We have much more traffic on the website. People are much more supportive. They are willing to create content. Young people is learning how to develop things in the background of WordPress. It's amazing. It's things that they never imagined they could do, and they are doing it. We have moms filled in video blogs. It's just fantastic. So I highly recommend you to engage with your audience and build a community. Thank you. Thanks very much. That's fantastic. That's a really, really good talk. Um, do we have any questions? All right, down the front. You went. OK, you can ask a question afterwards. Excellent. <laughs> what do you do if somebody um, sends a worrying message via whichever channel, so. Yeah, I forgot to mention that. It's actually really good. So normally we always receive a lot of criticism because internet. Um, we have always answered. We have always given an explanation and we have even contacted them by phone. That's the main thing that we do. Uh, it doesn't have to be me. Sometimes it's the CEO. It just calls them and talks with them, trying to solve the problem. But what has started happening is that our community answers them. So we receive tons of silly questions. Like we post a post there with all the info, and they say, so at what time is it? <laughs> and there is always someone answering. The community takes away so much work from me, from private messages, from public comments, because they are the ones, the moms especially, but a lot of young people as well answering them and sharing information in an accurate way. And it has happened also with hate. When you have someone that is very angry because they were waiting under the rain and the bus was 10 minutes late, and <laughs> why were you not there if you told me you were going to be there? There's always someone say, yeah, times are approximately. And we always say sorry, for sure. Be kind, be thankful, always. OK. Does that make sense? It does. Thank <laughs> you. Hi, I'm interested in your video blogs. Mm -hmm. um, what sort of guidelines do you give to people about making a video blog? And, and also um, about the permissions to show pictures of children? Mm -hmm. So the UK is very strict when it comes to photography and videography. And recently, the, the law has changed as well. Uh, so every single child has to sign a document. Uh, the only thing is that we never take pictures or share any kind of content when they are in swimsuits or any kind of that, even they are doing swimming activities. Um, yeah, basically, we make them sign a document to all parents. Uh, when they are old enough, they're in their 20s, they have to sign it themselves. When it comes to video blogs, we don't really have that many rules. I try to tell them to clean their cameras. <laughs> That's the only thing. 
Uh, if they want to do landscape, landscape fine. If they want to do portrait, portrait's fine. Because something that we have seen is that the most informal videos get more views. Don't ask me how, but we have horrible selfie videos, dirty lens of someone talking about something, and they get, I don't know, like 10,000 views. And we are a platform that basically has about 3,000 users. So that's a lot for us. Um, it's true that we try to guide them, because a lot of them have this camera panic of, what do I talk now about? Uh, we try to guide them about moments that they could record things on, or topics they could cover during their videos, but that's about it. There is not much more, because it's very natural. And content dies very quickly in our website, because we are constantly changing it, so it's not a big deal if someone makes a mistake. Anyone else for a question? Right, yeah. I actually have loads of questions, but I'll try to keep it brief. <laughs> um, thank you, this was really informative. And um, my question is like, I can see how this works for consumer community, um, but do you have any tips on business to business? Because having your own community mm. seems to be like the buzzword for a month, and I get lots of clients, yeah, and I want to build my own community as well and then they sort of expect you to put up a platform and it sort of automatically yeah. <laughs> happens by itself. So I have a question like, if, have you got any tips, like, f because they're not sure if they should be on social or build their own, and how to get engagement from like business to business, because that seems to be a bit more stiff in a way. Yeah, I mean, there are two main things that it was very easy for us. So first of all, we're a small charity. So there are not that many rules settled in place. If I would have tried this on Oxfam, they would have just kicked me out. They would be like, no, sorry. <laughs> we have guidelines, we have rules, we cannot do this. My team was very willing to change things because this was very obvious. There were a gap, huge gap, so we needed to change things. Part of business to business is that you have to convince your team that changing things regularly is good and that growing a community will take months. We were very lucky because we already had about 1,200,000 users on Facebook. That was really good. No, 100,000, no, 1,200, that's it. <laughs> um, so we could move them around, let's say. But most of the community that has come to the website was n in none of our platforms. That was very unexpected. So that's one thing. And the other thing is that everyone has a community. Because at the end of the day, Amazon is not doing it. But let's be real. Wouldn't we be interested on investments from Amazon into their communities or how they work in the technological community? Could not they bring their users? I think they could. I don't think they would be that difficult. Yeah, I, I just noticed that they put a platform up and hope yeah, they, it starts to maintain itself, you know, and they don't sort of realize they have to moderate it or yeah. activate it. So yeah. what, what did you do about that? About that is, yeah, I'm the moderator. So we are very careful to protect every single user because of the areas that we work on. Certain things can be very triggering, so you have to be careful. And the second thing is that they need to receive something. They need to gain something from your platform. If your website gives them the information and that's it, they're not going to come back. There's no reason to come back. We always tease them. We always bring them back, build the hype, tell them we have new pictures. You know, like it's, it's a matter of being patient, being constant, and being very into what they like. Because at the end of the day, if there are no reasons to come back, you lose them, I think. Any, yeah, another question? A very quick question. Um, how do you manage uh, acceptable use policy? So, <laughs> We do have some policies in place, and we do have some rules, and definitely, obviously, um, um, pulling all kinds of pornography, all the kind of stuff, is obviously a, a way of our platforms. But you need to be careful, because young people sometimes use this banter and words as a form of relationship. So, especially because we are Glasgow, like, <laughs> honestly, everyone loves a banter, everyone loves making a joke even about really horrible things. And the other thing is that we've been teaching the people that are closer to us 
what is correct online and what is not correct online. So a lot of them might be drinking booze in a picture, and we try to tell them why that is not ideal. They might still do it, but we might moderate it out of our website, if that makes sense. Um, but it's very case to case. So we do have the policies and everything like everyone does, but we are very case to case um, because it varies a lot. And you really need to read the tone in there. Some people are just simply rude and you cannot do anything but. <laughs> okay, well, thank you very much. Can we have thank a big you. round of applause, please?